There's a lot of talk in Washington these days about the so-called unmasking of the identities of American citizens who are surveilled by American intelligence services. Here to explain when that is legal or illegal is Baker Hostetler partner David Rivkin, a contributor to our op-ed pages. So, David, let's start with the basics here. What rights do U.S. citizens enjoy who reside here in the United States? Well, they enjoy full constitutional protections, uh, including that provided by the Fourth Amendment of the Constitution that has to do merely with unreasonable searches and seizures. So uh, if you are, if the government is trying to acquire the content of a communication of a U.S. citizen, uh, you need a full-fledged uh, warrant for that uh, uh, from an article, uh, an article free court, uh, or in some circumstances, if you're proceeding under FISA for an Alien Surveillance Act, in a specific order, which is similar in most respects to a warrant from a FISA court. What, however, the government is able, under much looser rules, to sweep uh, communications involving conversations that uh, transpire at least with one recipient overseas. What's important, uh, in, in, uh, and, and this is what the statute provides for, it's important that the identity of a U.S. person that is on the other side of his conversation uh, be safeguarded unless it's unmasked, which is something that can be done only for a very good cause, and the misuse of unmasking authority actually uh, is, is a serious violation of law. Well, let's explore that a little bit, because we know to date that several Obama administration officials, including National Security Advisor Susan Rice, John Brennan, U.N. Ambassador Samantha Power, they all requested the so-called unmasking of U.S. citizens. Is that in and of itself illegal, David? And under what circumstances would it be legal? Uh, uh, good, good question. Uh, the statute indicates that the only circumstances in which unmasking can occur, and again, for purposes of your, of your viewers, unmasking is telling the recipient of the information about the substance of that conversation, precisely what you said, and your identity, because typically uh, most recipients of an interceptive communication don't even get to see the, the, the full flavor of, uh, of it. It's only ne appropriate if it is, quote, necessary to discern the full intelligence or counterintelligence significance of the interceptive conversation. Leaving anything else aside, the notion that the National Security Advisor or the U.N. ambassador are in the business of performing their own intelligence analysis. So I'll put Brennan in a somewhat different category, but to me, the situation with Susan Rice and Samantha Powell is per se utterly inappropriate because it does not fit in this exception. But it is not their David, job. Let's, okay, let's set, this, let's set that aside for one second. Let's, let's just assume, for purposes of the, of the argument, that they did inappropriately ask to unmask the identity of a U.S. citizen. Is that a crime in the criminal sense or the civil sense, or is it simply going over some kind of line that they shouldn't really have crossed? It, 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 is, a, it is a crime in a, in a criminal sense, and, but it's, it's more than, than... So doing that in, in, inappropriately, not in accordance with the, the, the language which I loosely quoted regarding the, you know, the need to discern the full intelligence or counterintelligence value of communication. Aside from that, the obvious question is why? So it's not just a, a, a breaking of a law by virtue of unmasking. The question becomes, are you a part of a conspiracy? And I, I hate to sound paranoid, but are you part of a conspiracy uh, of, of a number of people who, for political reason, want to hurt, harm, and embarrass uh, the president-elect and his team. And if that's the case, uh, at least <laughs> apropos of a Comey hearing today, uh, that is certainly something that should be fairly investigated. And uh, if the facts lead this way, a lot of people are, are going to be facing very serious and very credible threats of criminal prosecution. That's right. You're you you understand my point. I it, do. Yeah. You're referring to the Comey it, hearing. It, it, You're referring to the Comey hearing uh, this, this week on Thursday. David, um, what about the president himself? If President Obama said to Samantha Power, please go and unmask this intelligence information, because it might concern, for instance, a Trump campaign official, does the president have protections because of the vast powers of his office? 
Uh, well, first of all, the president cannot be, uh, I think it's accepted teaching Office of Legal Counsel and accepted by most constitutional scholars, myself included. The president is immune from any criminal prosecution while in office. President Obama, of course, is not in office. In my view, if he was involved in a conspiracy with Susan Rice, Smith for Powers, or other people to impro unmask for improper reasons uh, various uh, Americans, that would be a, 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 a grave offense and the one for which, uh, for which he can certainly be criminally prosecuted, if facts lead this way. Let me also tell you this. Look, everybody is properly concerned about the Russian investigation in terms of whether Russia interfered in our elections. And I, I think it's a weighty matter. But frankly, I'm scared much more by evidence, because I don't expect anything good to come out of Russia. I'm much more scared by evidence that our government possibly engaged in a conspiracy to violate constitutional rights of Americans. I think that should be tremendously concerning and, and should be thoroughly investigated. I agree with you. Final question, David. We've talked about the conduct, potential conduct, of Obama administration officials, but separately, leaking this information to the media, is that a criminal act? Yes, of course, leaking classified information is a criminal act, but let me connect the dots a little tighter. If you are talking about the same people who were involved in conspiracy of unmasking, and some of them are all of them participated in leaking, then you do have kind of an overlapping conspiracy uh, where different parts of it reinforce each other, uh, illustrating the overarching goal, which is to cause harm to uh, a duly elected president. Uh, and uh, and his team, which, again, I, I don't think ever happened in, in, in American history, thank God. Well, thank you for sorting through all those details for us. Baker Hostetler partner David Rivkin, thanks very much.